them. It seems to me only a matter of time before you fellows will own the entire country. And only this morning I heard one of the officers of what I had always considered the leading bank in the street say that you and your crowd could wreck even his house if you set your mind to it. Laughing, I continued, and the other day someone at the hotel said that there might be Napoleons in the street, but that you were the Talleyrand behind the scenes. Steele smiled, but I could see that it was a pleased sort of smile, and that there was some visible increase of interest in me. Oh, that's foolish, he said. Nobody can make values. They are determined by natural laws. Nobody has any power over such things. Some things are good. Some things are bad. We have been more successful than others because we have gone into the better things. That's all. There may be some truth in that, I said, but you are dodging what I was saying. Now, you see, you know that the banks, and especially your banks, pass upon the value of securities in the street, all securities in the street. If you want to do so, I do not mean to say that you ever do, but if you want to, you can discredit them. You can call for more margin, set a bad story going, and the newspapers are only too willing to take it. This big house you live in and what you think is the backbone of the nation is a house of cards. One only needs to set a rumor going. It is a really good as reality, and it sets everything tumbling. And were you disposed to do it, you could precipitate a panic today by merely calling in your loans or by discrediting a line of securities. Just think, man, of the banks, trust companies, financial institutions that you control. You could break not only brokers, but corporations and railroads. You could throw the entire country into convulsions if it were to your interest to do so. I have been figuring the matter up and find that the national banks and trust companies which you control are over $400 million on deposit, nearly half as much as the government debt. Now, suppose you wanted to secure control of a railroad or any other good thing. See how easily you could do it by starting a few rumors, by discrediting stock, by calling for more collateral, by tightening up the market. Or if that did not work, you could bring about a cut in dividends through your control of directors. In a hundred ways, you have it in your power to clean out the marginal holdings of thousands of men in a week's time. I do not mind telling you one thing, said Steele. Of course, there are chances in all departments of a life to the individual, but everything in the world is reducible and to some rule if we can only find the rule. The thing that seems most a matter of chance is subject to some rule. And here in Wall Street, people used to speculate much as you would gamble on a ship's run. There are some who still do it, but they do not last long. Now, here is one thing I want you to think about. How many stockbrokers are there in the city? Probably a dozen legitimate ones, I said. And they are all prosperous, are they not? Yes, so far as I know, they are all coining money. Things are on the boom. And these brokers' establishments are springing up in every building. Yes, said Steele, and that is true of all the large cities of America. And if you go into these offices when stocks are rising, you will find a lot of people buying stocks. What I want you to notice is that they are all buying. And they always buy when stocks are on the up upward grade. Probably one person out of 20 of your people out, pay, out west pay, play the other side of the market and sell short. All the rest buy. Now, you know what a lot of people buy and cause the stocks to rise up. And just so long as all the people will buy, just so long will prices continue to rise. You got caught in such a universal state of mind when you bought copper. Now, remember this thing. When stocks are moving up as they are now are, it's the worst sort of time to buy, either for investment or speculation. But you people out west will never learn that fact no matter how hard you get hit, no matter how much you may suffer. You come back again to the game on each rising market, only to be among the losers when the next bear market comes along, as it inevitably does. As soon as the market gets started up, you begin to buy. And the higher the prices go, the crazier you will get. You were all like a flock of sheep following after a bellwether. You never sit down and think of any questions. Now it's this fact that Wall Street banks are about once a year. The time to sell is when everybody out west is buying. If you understand this fact, he said, you will learn one simple rule of the game. Why if the Wall Street puffed a corporation for manufacturing ice out of sunbeams and it went up fast enough, your fellows would buy it. Don't you see that fact? You would never think of selling short. Of course you would not. Yet every time you buy, somebody has to sell. And the men who are selling are those who know the value of the security, of a security. If it is a good one, they are all waiting for a chance to get possession of it again when it comes down, as it inevitably will in the course of time. So now remember this. If you will speculate, and apparently everybody out west does speculate, wait until a stock gets well up, and then sell short when everybody else is buying. You will probably be the only man about the board who does it, 
and it may be against your temporary feeling, but sell. It costs the West millions, yes, hundreds of millions, I presume, every year to learn this lesson. Yet it is worked by Wall Street about once every 12 months, and you never catch on.